I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those that seek the Lord will lack no good thing. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Fear the Lord, you his holy people, because those who fear him lack nothing. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. His ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones, not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked, the foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Well, good morning, church. I hope we're doing well. It's so great to be with you again on another Sunday morning. I don't know about you, but I feel like these Sundays are coming around so quickly. Um, but believing for a great service this morning. And if you're new to church, just want to encourage you and just l for you to know that you are so welcome with us. If you clicked on by chance this morning, I believe that you are here on purpose. So just encourage you to stay with us. We believe this morning is going to be a significant morning. And just as we heard out of Psalm 34, as some of our congregation were reading from it, it mentions partway through, taste and see that the Lord is good. And I believe this morning that wherever you find yourself, you might just taste and see that the Lord is good. And he wants to draw close to your heart this morning. This morning, we've got some great things going on and just want to remind you that a bit later on, we're going to be taking communion together. So if you've not yet got your juice or your wine or your piece of bread, you've still got chance to go and prepare for that. Um, otherwise, just want to also let you know towards the end of the service we're going to hear a song that's been written out of our worship team we just believe that God speaks and it's our responsibility to hear what he speaks and just as David does as we read in the Psalms he knew God's heart and in the Psalms you hear this overflow of praise and I believe that God is put on our heart as a church to be writing out of that revelation. When God speaks, we want to catch it and we want to declare it. So I encourage you to really listen in later on in the service to that song. We believe it's a song for the season that's going to speak into your heart this morning. But for now, we're going to sing a song together. We're going to sing Living Hope. So let's declare this song knowing that God is with us and he is our living hope in every season we go through. the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night and through the Mark. 
Dad smells like Valentino perfume, which is very strong, and sometimes I can't stand. Um, deodorant. Cabbage. Play football with us in the garden. Eat. Sleep. He loves watching the news. He loves spending time with me. Play football and try and beat us in the garden. Because they help you get through hard times. Because he's... Because... Um, because he earns money. Because they look after us. Because they get to play with you and they get to take you to parties. And they get to take you to play areas. Um, he, he's always there to talk to when I need him. Because he makes me laugh. Because he helps me. Because he's the best daddy in the whole wide world. Because he's so funny and 
he like and he likes doing things that that always cheer us up. He, he honestly, it is, he is the worst person I think I know for dancing. My dad never dances because he's terrible at it. looking after me. Thank you for being my dad. Hi everyone, we hope you're doing well. Now we hope that you are making the most of social distancing in the garden. I know I am, but Jack, how are you finding it? Awesome. Great. Now we are here to talk to the young adults. If you're 18 plus and consider yourself as a young adult, then we are talking to you. And so guys, we're meeting as often as we can on Zoom to chat, to have quizzes, to pray, and to also just to be there for one another in this time. And so guys, I'm talking to you. We're meeting every week on a Thursday at 8 p.m. And girls, we're meeting every other Wednesday at 8 p.m. on Zoom also. We also have a WhatsApp where we can connect day to day, share praise reports, prayer requests, silly videos and encouragements. And so if we're talking to you, we want to hear from you. So please contact us at office at lifechurch.eu. That's office at lifechurch.eu. We love our Young Adults community and have found it so important to journey this time with other young adults. So we cannot wait to meet you and we hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye. Hi, my name is Liz and I work down at the Bedworth Food Bank. The food bank has been really busy over the last couple of months. In April, we issued food to 900 people. In May, that number increased to 1,000 people. In comparison, in 2019, we issued food parcels to over 1,000 people for the whole of the year. So the demand for food parcels has rapidly increased. There are two ways in which you can help the food bank. Firstly, we're looking for volunteers. Most volunteers work half a day a week for about two and a half to three hours. There are a range of different roles here at the food bank. You could be taking out deliveries um, to clients who are unable to come out and collect their food parcels, making and taking phone calls to the clients, or you could help move donations and uh, waste stock in and shift it around in crates, or you could be making up food parcels for our clients um, so that they're ready to roll when, when the need is there. A second way in which you could help the food bank is actually by donations. Um, so either monetary donations or food donations. There are a whole range of food items that we are currently needing in the food bank which will appear on the screen. You can drop these items off at Life Church Monday through to Thursday from 9.30 until 2.30 or on a Friday between 10 and 12. If you'd like any more information about Food Bank or how to sign up or how to find out more to be a volunteer, please just contact the Live Church office. We are really privileged and humbled to be able to serve the community in this way. So please, whatever you can do to support our Food Bank would be really greatly appreciated. Church, Craig here, hope you're well. It's a privilege to lead us into communion this week. As I've been reading and praying and thinking around the passage and thoughts of the Last Supper, the phrase that I'm reminded of is, do this in remembrance of me. 
in my own faith journey there are times of significance, things that I remember, things that I recall when I'm feeling down, when I'm feeling distracted, when I'm feeling distant from the things of God. One of those things is the Bible promise from my baptism in 1995. It was Proverbs 3 verses 1 to 6. That passage was and still is a foundational scripture in my life. The second thing is around God's provision and God's faithfulness. When I did my gap year in 1999, I remember being at church one Sunday evening at Bedworth and I had 20 pounds in my wallet, but I needed that money for my petrol money home back to, uh, to Nottingham. And I normally would try and leave my money in the, ca in the car so that I wasn't challenged, uh, but this time I forgot. And uh, so I, I gave my money into the offering this 20 pound and I was thinking about how I was going to get home that evening. But someone, a friend of mine who's still in the church today, came up, gave me a hug, asked me how things were going and slipped 20 pounds into my hand. And that simple act reminds me of God's faithfulness and reminds me of God's provision in my life. I think Jesus knew that the disciples would struggle after Jesus left them physically. He knew that they needed some kind of uh, habit, some kind of ritual. And this is what Jesus created. This is what Jesus modelled. He knew that they would need something to remember him by, something of a marker in the sand. They would look back and speak and go, oh, do you remember that meal that we had with Jesus? And he shared the bread and the wine with us. I hope that this uh, act, this ritual, isn't something that you have become numb to, something that's become mundane. It's an incredible invitation to the table of the Father. It's an invitation for you and I to come and commune and have a relationship with God. It's special, it's religious, it's sacred. And I pray that we together today know and are reminded of these things. Let me read a prayer to you. This is the table not of the church, but of the Lord. It is to be made ready for those who love him and those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come not because I invite you, it is the invitation of our Lord. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here. God, we thank you for bringing heaven to us. And may we know your presence in our lives, the presence of heaven. May it draw near to us at this time. God bless.
everyone great to be with you today uh, happy father's day to many of the men that are watching right now i trust that you have got a bacon butty in hand that is dripping with brown sauce that was lovingly prepared for you this morning but if not i trust you're enjoying your day nonetheless and welcome everybody that's watching in wherever you're watching in from you are welcome to our church family and our experience this morning Hey, who would have thought we are now on episode 14 of Life Church Online? We have been doing this for 14 weeks. I don't think any of us anticipated or expected that lockdown would last as long as it has. But nevertheless, here we are. God has been good. God has been faithful. God has been with us. And I believe that God is still moving and that God is ministering to his people in these difficult days in which we live. And this morning, I want to take us back to the verse that I preached from in our first ever episode. And it's a verse that I have prayed over our people every day, ever since. And it's a verse found in Philippians 4, verse 7. And it says, And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I have prayed that consistently over our church because I believe that now, more than ever, we need to make sure that our hearts and our minds are healthy. Because the truth is, the health of your life is determined by the health of your heart. The Bible says in Proverbs 23 verse 7 that as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. Proverbs 4 verse 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Another version says, Everything you do flows from your heart. So if we want our lives to be healthy and whole, We've got to make sure that our hearts are healthy and whole. And this morning, what I want to do, this is going to be hopefully a short and simple message. I just want to check in and check up on the condition of our hearts. When I was a teenager, I had to go to Manchester Children's Hospital to get my physical heart examined. We've got a history of heart disease and heart dysfunction, particularly on my mother's side of our family. So in light of that history, I had to go along to the hospital and get checked out. And I was hooked up to an ECG machine and an echogram monitor. And for a period of time, my heart was observed to check whether it was healthy 
and whole. And this morning, I want to check in and I want to hook us up to God's word because I believe that there is a spiritual ECG that we can undertake this morning that will reveal to us whether our hearts are in a healthy condition. Because if you want a healthy life, you have got to possess a healthy heart. And I believe that there are four biblical tests, perhaps not only four, but I've identified four four biblical tests that I want us to unpack this morning that might just reveal to us how our hearts are truly doing in this season. The first test of our hearts that I want to look at this morning is the test of our wealth. Jesus said this in Matthew 6 21. He said, for where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Where your treasure is, there your heart is also. In other words, if you want to know where your heart is at, have a look where your treasure is going. There is a biblical and a spiritual connection between the condition of our heart and the overflow of our wealth. And I believe this, that a healthy heart that is surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ will be a generous heart. I believe that a generous spirit is reflective of a healthy heart. And this morning, I want to quickly encourage our people that are listening in to keep on being the generous people that God has called you to be. I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful today for everybody who has continued to tithe faithfully into the house of God that is Life Church. I want to thank everybody that has sown sacrificially to contribute to the vision of Life Church because you have enabled us to continue to be a blessing to our community, to continue to meet the needs of the most vulnerable around us in this difficult period of time that we're having to navigate together. So I want to commend you and I want to thank you, Life Church, for the generous heart that you have clearly got. But I want to continue to encourage you to be generous in this season that we are going through. Not just generous towards the church, but be generous to the people around you. I'm so pleased and so thrilled with our children and our young people that have been doing random acts of kindness for people in their neighborhoods over the past couple of months. But I want to encourage us as adults this week. This might sound like a childish challenge, but listen, I want to challenge us adults today to model generosity. I want you this week to think of somebody that you can be generous with towards. It might be as simple as picking up a loaf of bread for a neighbor, or it might be as extravagant as blessing a random stranger with a tank full of petrol at the petrol station this week. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I do want to encourage you to be generous this week because I believe that generosity reflects the heart of God. The Bible says in John 3 16 the most famous verse probably in all of scripture that God so loved the world that he gave. When you love someone you give. When you're devoted to someone you give and I believe that a heart devoted to God is a heart that wants to be generous towards God, towards his church and towards the people that God has called us to reach. You know, when it comes to money, when it comes to finance, my personal philosophy is this, is that it is okay to have money as long as money does not have you. It's okay to have money as long as money does not have you. God and God alone should be the Lord of our hearts. The Bible makes it clear that mammon or money cannot often coexist in the same space in which God wants to reside. And John Wesley said this, he said that whenever I receive money into my hand, I let it go as quickly as possible, lest it find a way into my heart. Money, it's okay to have money. 
but it is not okay for money to have you. And one of the best way to, ways to make sure that money does not find a way into your heart. It's a great tool in your hand, but a great way of making sure it doesn't seep and become an obsession of your heart is to be a generous person who seeks to freely bless the people around our lives. So why not this week? Make an extra effort to be generous because I, because I believe a generous spirit is reflective of a healthy heart. Secondly, I want to look at the test of our words. We've got the test of our wealth, but secondly, I want to look at the test of our words. Luke 6, 45, Jesus speaking again. He says this, he says, the good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. I wonder whether you've ever used the phrase, my heart was in my mouth. I remember when I was once flying into Aberdeen Airport on a little flyby plane that just had two seats either side. It was propeller engined. It was a windy, stormy day. And I remember coming into land at Aberdeen Airport and the plane was literally flying around side to side. It was wild. And I remember getting off the plane and turning to somebody who I was getting off the plane with saying, my goodness, my heart was in my mouth as we came in to land. And the truth is this, that I believe often turbulent times will reveal what is truly going on within our hearts. And whenever we speak, often what is happening is that we are revealing the content and the condition of our hearts more than we are describing the conditions around us or even the people around us. You know, people often say, well, I'm just one of these people who I say it like it is. The truth is, you rarely say it like it is. You more often say it as you are. Because from the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And a great revealer of the health of your heart is what comes out of your mouth. We heard just last week a brilliant message from John Andrews that spoke of how we don't have to allow the condition around our lives to shape the confession that flows from our lives. That you can have a positive confession even in the midst of of negative circumstances. You can have praise on your lips even though this is a hard time. You can have worship coming out of your mouth even though these are difficult days because your confession doesn't have to be determined by your condition. And I believe that one of the great revealers of a healthy heart is an encouraging mouth. That an encouraging mouth reveals a heart that is healthy. The Bible says in Hebrews 3.13, encourage one another daily as long as it is called today. We are commanded by God to encourage one another. We're commanded by God to lift one another. We're, in, we're commanded by God to honor one another. And I want to encourage you this week to take time and create space to encourage some of the people around your life. I've been so blessed in, in these 14 weeks. And I've got to be honest, at times during this lockdown period, I have felt the weight of life. I felt the weight of ministry. And I have had some difficult days personally. But I'm so grateful for some of the encouraging text messages, some of the encouraging emails, some of the encouraging phone calls that I've received from people within our church and out with our church. And that has lifted my spirit and lifted my posture and enabled me to face some of the difficult situations that we've had to navigate together. And I want to encourage us all to take the time to encourage. If you can't celebrate someone else, Maybe there is something wrong and something faulty in our hearts. I need to remind us that it is not our job to keep one another humble. Life will often humble us. And certainly the Bible makes it clear that if we don't humble ourselves, 
then God will humble us. But I'll tell you what the Bible does instruct us to do. It instructs us to encourage one another. It instru instructs us to honor one another. It instructs us to bear one another's burdens. We have a responsibility biblically to be people of honor and people of encouragement. And the culture of Life Church, or certainly the culture of Life Church that I want to see increasingly, is not one that tears people down but one that builds people up and speaks words of life and words of blessing and words of encouragement to one another. So how can you tell whether your heart is healthy? You can tell by listening to the content of your words because from the overflow of the heart, the mouth does speak. Thirdly, I want to look at the test of our worries. The test of our worries. John 14 verse 1, Jesus speaking again. He says, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. A worried heart is not a healthy heart. Heart. Let me read a few statements of worry about worry that have helped me understand the gravity of what it can weigh down in our lives. Worry is faith in the negative, trust in the unpleasant, assurance of disaster, and belief in defeat. Worry is a magnet that attracts negative circumstances. I found that to be true in my life, that the more you worry about something, more often than not, you almost invite your worst fears onto your life. Worry is wasting today's time to clutter up tomorrow's opportunities with yesterday's troubles. Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow, but it rather empties today of its strength. And my personal favorite is this. Worry is like sitting in a rocking chair. It gives you something to do but you're never going to go anywhere. Worry is a worthless exercise. Worry drains your spirit of its life-giving energy. And I wanna encourage you this morning to not be a person who is consumed by worry. Now, I know that is difficult. I know in this season we are in, we're unsettled, we're surrounded by uncertainty, and it would be easy to worry. But we are not called to be people of worry. We are called to be people of trust. I remember a number of years ago, a pastor who I respect enormously, I think has preached at Life Church in bed with many years ago, a pastor by the name of Danny Guglamucci. He's an Australian minister. And tragically, he lost his eldest son in a freak accident. His eldest son, Chris, was a youth pastor. He was preaching at a youth camp in Australia. He'd gone outside to get something from his car. And as he walked to his car, he was struck by lightning and he was killed instantly. And I remember following Danny, uh, who I know from afar, on, on his social media platforms as he just journeyed through that tragedy and the grief that, that that resulted in in his life. And I remember on one of his social media posts, he, he posted something that has stuck with me ever since. He said, I'm learning to practice what I preached, that I've got to trust his sovereignty when there is no clarity. I've got to trust his sovereignty when there is no clarity clarity. And I realize we're in a season that doesn't have much clarity. We don't know when this is going to be over. We don't know when we can meet as a church again. We're hearing reports that there's a bit of a spike in the hospital with new COVID admissions. I understand that we're uncertain and I understand that we lack clarity. But listen, we can still trust his sovereignty even when there is no clarity. He is still God. He is still on the throne. He is still sovereign. He is still in control. And he will see us through this season. So continue to trust his sovereignty, even when there is no clarity. And don't allow the worries of this life to choke 
the word of God that has been planted within you, that knows that God is good, that knows that God is faithful, that knows that God is true, and that knows that God ultimately will bring us through. The test of our worries. A healthy heart is not a heart that is consumed by worry. And fourth and final test that I want to just unpack briefly this morning is this. The test of our wants. The test of our wants. Psalm 37 verse 4, a familiar verse, says this. Delight yourselves in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. In my version, the wants of your heart. The wants of your heart. And I've heard that verse quoted and referenced many, many times. But mostly I hear it referenced and quoted incorrectly. Because what people have interpreted that verse to mean is that God is a God who if you delight yourself in his presence long enough, he will give you what you want. He knows what you want and he will give you what you want. When I was a youth pastor, I remember hearing teenagers say as they felt left on the shelf that God knows the desires of their heart and will provide them with a boyfriend or a girlfriend. I even remember one conversation, I kid you not, this was with an adult, would you believe, who said that they didn't believe that Jesus would return until they had got married because God knew that that was a desire within their heart and God would honour the desire of their heart. As though literally the culmination of human history was dependent on one person getting one desire that resided in their heart. Listen, that is an immature interpretation of that scripture. What that scripture is not saying is that God will will what we want. What it is saying is that we've got to get our lives to the point where we want what he wills. Because that word in the Hebrew to put within, God will give you the desires of your heart. The word in Hebrew is a word north and, and it literally means that God will place within us the desires of our hearts. That as we delight ourselves in him, our desires will change over time and come into greater alignment with his will, with his word, and with his way. God is not a cosmic genie who we can manipulate into getting what we want. And I want to say something quite strongly right now. If you spend time in God's presence only seeking him for what you might get from him, that is not worship. That is idolatry. Because you have made yourself the center of, and the subject of that time in his presence. Delighting ourselves in the Lord should mean that there is something of a heart transplant that takes place, where it's no longer about self, it's no longer about what we want, but his desires are transplanted into our hearts, and no longer is it about us, but it's entirely about him and his plan and his purpose. I want to encourage you in this season of lockdown that we have got remaining, I think, to delight yourself in the Lord and ask God to give you the desires of your heart. Not the wants that you seek from him, but that he would supernaturally put his will into your heart so that you know what the next season of your life will look like. I, I, I believe this, that we've got to get our lives to that point of surrender where we can honestly say, God, I want to decrease because I want to see you increase in my life. And the test of our wants is a good indicator of revealing the health of our hearts. Is our heart fully surrendered to God, to his will or his way? Or are we holding on to things that we might ultimately want but it not, might not be part of God's will for our lives. How is your heart this morning? How is your heart this morning? What is the condition of your heart? You can test it today by looking at your wealth, your words, your worries, and your wants, because our heart reveals the condition of our lives. So I'm gonna pray right now 
I'm going to ask God to move and minister into our hearts today so that we can truly become more of the people that God has called us to be. Father God, I thank you that you want dominion, ownership, authorship of our hearts. Your word tells us that we are to set you apart in our hearts as Lord. And I pray that that would be true of each and every one of us in this season. That Lord, we would take ourselves off the throne of our lives and Lord, we would allow you to take your rightful place. We would allow you to determine what we do with our finance. We would allow you to determine the content of what comes out of our mouths. We would allow you to bring peace where the world would seek to pressure us with worry and we would allow you to deposit the desires of your heart into our heart this day. Father God, we want to thank you for your presence. We want to thank you for your goodness. We want to thank you that you are faithful to us even when we are faithless. And Lord, I pray right now that as we just spend some more time in your presence, that Lord, you would move and you would touch our hearts and you will bring transformation. I truly do pray that the peace of God would guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. That anxiety, that worry, that struggle and striving would not be symptomatic of the condition of our hearts, but rest and peace and security and goodness would be things that reside within and ultimately overflow from our lives. In Jesus' precious and powerful name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, we're going to have something really exciting right now. Uh, our worship team have written a song from the overflow of their hearts that I think very much speaks into the season we are in. And I'm going to hand over right now to the brilliant Nora and Jacob who are going to explain this song to us before we listen to it. God bless you. We love you. Stay tuned. So this next song is an original um, which has come out of our worship team and it just kind of highlights how God is in the midst of our trials, he's in the midst of hardship, um, that we're not alone in those times, um, but it also just reminds us of the promise that he is close to the brokenhearted, that in times when you don't even have words to express your pain or your worries or your anxiety, he is there and he promises to be close and he is for you, he is with you, He's always been and he always will be. Yeah, and the actual song will be available to stream on all streaming platforms like Spotify, iTunes, even your Alexa, all of that exciting stuff. Um, but for this Sunday, we decided to shoot a live version. Now, obviously, because of lockdown, the live version is restricted to people's homes and we've mashed together loads of videos. So that's been fun to make. It's kept us busy a little bit. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. It's called God of the Impossible and I hope it encourages you this Sunday.
He's been with us and he's been for us from the very start. And regardless of the circumstances we go through that can feel like real valley moments, I know that when we go through some of those difficult things, and maybe you feel that right now, as you've tuned into the service this morning, you've just felt like you're going through a tough situation. I want you to know, just as that song declares, that he is the God of the impossible. And I believe that those impossibilities, when it looks like there's a massive mountain in front of you, and it looks like there's no way to get to the other side, I promise you that God is for you and he is with you and he will see you through. He is such a faithful father. And just want to honour Pastor Danny for a brilliant word this morning. I just feel so blessed to have Pastor Danny and Naomi leading our church. And um, we are so blessed. And just to think about that word ongoingly, that we, we would have our heartbeat line up with God's heartbeat, that the desires of our heart would become His desires, that we would live out of a place of His vision and His perspective for our lives. What an incredible thing just to sit on and consider. I just want to um, remind you of a couple of things going on this week we've got our Cultivate Conversations. We had a brilliant one a couple of weeks ago with, with Pastor Martin and Esther from CLM Church in Coventry and we've got another one coming up this Monday so just encourage you to look out for that at 7 o'clock. It's brilliant just hearing um, us talk to different people across our nation about God and their journey of faith and um, yeah we've got plenty of other great things going on in, in the week. Life groups, young adults on a Wednesday and Thursday and so many things to connect in with. So I encourage you to email us at office at Life 
www.lifechurch.eu and we'd love to get in touch with you and connect you in to places where you can become a part of this family that is active not just on a Sunday but every single day of the week. But for now church, we love you loads, we miss you loads and I pray that you have an amazing week. See you soon.